Lost Caverns of Ixalan is just a couple weeks away, and we now have the full slate of reveals for the box toppers. And let me tell you, there's some pretty good reprints in here, so let's jump into the video. Alright everybody, thanks so much for being here, and please go ahead, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so, and then click that bell icon if you want to be notified when new videos are uploaded, especially during set spoilers and releases. I'm trying to cover stuff as quickly as possible, so make Love Check your source for all Magic Gathering news and information by clicking that button. So, we're going to jump right into this video today. I'm not going to waste any time, but we've got the Foil Treasure Trove Box Toppers, and these will be available in all different booster box types as foils. I believe, just like with previous box topper sets in, uh, you know, Lost Capital of Ixalan, the box toppers will be available as non-foil in collector boosters as well. Um, well. We'll see that for sure as they start to open up collector boosters, how commonly they pull, but this was the case for Lord of the Rings, you know, Zendikar Rising, Expeditions, I mean, this has been pretty standard, so I'm assuming it's going to be the same. Um, these are all treasure-themed, of course, playing into Ixalan's whole treasure underground thing, and some of these reprints are really good, so let's just get right into them. Starting off with Coercive Portal, this was actually one of the first reveals that we got, and prior to this reprint, it was about a $14 card ish uh from conspiracy so not the most accessible card uh but it's definitely a solid card and it's actually a decent enough reprint uh not the best you know reprint in here but still a solid card with some solid value that needed to get reprinted so glad to see that here now my personal favorite for this is amulet of vigor this was 21 dollars at the cheapest it was a list print most recently i didn't exactly have too many prints before that uh, just such a good card, though. A one-drop artifact. Whenever a permanent enters the battlefield tapped and under your control, untap it. Um, there's so many combos and ways to utilize this, and it's just one of those cards that's, like, really good if you can have access to it. And it just was not widely accessible and was pretty pricey. Plus, it's only a rare in here, which means it should appear relatively frequently, so not bad at all. I think this is a really, really strong reprint overall. Expedition map is uh, $3-ish from Double Masters was its last printing. A pretty good uncommon, but one that is almost always worth money. And its foil versions actually end up commanding a decent price too. So I think as a whole, this is going to be a good inclusion. It would probably suck to get a box topper and have your foil be an uncommon, but, you know, that's kind of the nature of the game. It's a card I think you'll see a lot of people kind of gravitate towards and want to pick up just because it is a really good utility card that is, you know, relatively affordable by you know what we're going to be looking at here chalice of the void is probably one of the biggest in terms of value about 70 dollars at the cheapest this was last reprinted in time spiral remastered a couple of years back it is just an insanely powerful card that just seems to keep going up with every reprint that it gets the artwork is just unbelievable and everything about this card is cool it's obviously going to be the chase hit for this you know, box stoppers and probably even just out of the collector boosters in general. But I can't complain about a reprint that's, you know, 70 plus dollars for non foil and I think like almost a hundred dollars plus for regular foil. So this may be the cheapest opportunity you have to actually get a copy of this card in foil, uh, depending on where prices and values settle. But yes, Chalice of the Void is a massive home run. Arcane Signet. This is one that I'm kind of surprised by, if only because it's been printed so many times recently and obviously will continue to be. But it's a commander staple and typically alternate versions of Arcane Signet do command a solid value, especially in foil. And the artwork on this one is gorgeous, so it's not uh, you know anything to be upset about. I think this will be a decent kind of desirable card for people that want to play a higher rarity version of Arcane Signet without, you know, having to go crazy trying to get maybe one of the other ones that's already high up. I don't know where this will settle, but obviously, you know, being, like I said, a premium version of that, uh, the most recent one we saw was the one from Commander Masters, which is, you know, 10-ish dollars for the foil and two or three for the non-foil, so I would expect it to be somewhere in that same realm. Chromatic Orrery is a great reprint as well. This one was about $23 at the cheapest. It was only in Corset 2021. It's not played in everything, but in the decks it is played in. It can be extremely powerful. And of course, you may spend mana as though or mana of any color. Opens up so many different combo lines for this. Just another really good reprint of a card that I think the longer time went on, the more expensive it was going to become. 
Whisper Silk Cloak. Uh, not a huge fan of this one. I'm not going to lie to you. It was about a $2.50 uncommon. And unlike Arcane Signet, typically it's, you know, higher end versions don't really command much of a difference in price. So this is one you're probably going to be like, oh, that's, you know, unfortunate to pull out of your box stopper. But again, there are always going to be some of those. And this isn't even like the worst one in here. It's a good card. It obviously has a lot of use. It's just maybe it would have been better slated somewhere else. And I think you could have put a better card here uh, in the box stopper from a value point. Wedding Ring is, first of all, just the artwork here is incredible. Um, a card was actually really expensive for a while, and then it got reprinted in the Doctor Who set just, you know, a month ago, if even. Uh, it was about $3 for a copy of this out of the Doctor Who set, so we're looking at a pretty low-value reprint. However, I do think it's possible this version of it will command a good value because of the art style and because, you know, the ability to get it in foil, and if you're not a fan of Universes Beyond, etc., um, this may be more appealing to you. So I'm not going to critique this one as a reprint too much. I think it's solid. I don't. I would have maybe made it a rare instead of a mythic just because i think in terms of the likelihood of it popping up uh but it's it's fine it's a solid enough inclusion for a card that you know it would have been a great reprint if it was maybe two months ago before the doctor who stuff colossus hammer a really really good card can be absolutely hilarious in certain decks about two dollars and fifty cents at the cheapest uh, last printing of this was in a DD adventures of forgotten realms commander deck and it did not have many other printings from that so it's a good card and i think with every reprint it gets it does fall down in price but it's really cool from you know a artwork and playability perspective again for the uncommons here out of the box toppers you're typically going to be looking at lower value stuff unless these end up shaking up with their own unique set of values because they're only available in box toppers and all of that. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. I think the set's going to be widely open, so I don't expect anything crazy. Fist of Suns. You can't tell me that's not an Infinity Gauntlet or maybe part of, um, you know, a little bit of a teaser, right? For Magic Marvel crossover coming. But I, I don't think that's what this is. I think it's just playing into it. It's just I could only see, like, the Thanos with the gems. Um, a good card, though. Last was reprinted uh, as part of the list. Hasn't been printed a ton um, prior to that it's obviously not a like staple card by any stretch but in certain like five color decks it can be pretty good uh, about three dollars at the cheapest though so again nothing crazy in terms of value still you know uh it's a solid enough card that you know some of these it just makes sense to give them reprints that are a bit more widely accessible temple bell uh last was printed in commander 2016 actually so this one's going back quite a while about a five dollar card for that printing uh version of it three mana to play each player draws a card obviously giving your opponent draws in a lot of scenarios is not necessarily good but there are certainly ways and, and combos to uh, make that work to your benefit it's a it's fine it's a decent reprint it's old it sees some play and it needed a reprint so i'm not going to complain there Coat of Arms, a five drop, really cool card that basically works extremely well in like token decks and stuff. Uh, $18 was the cheapest for its list printing. This is just a really, really good card in, in tribal and anything that really kind of like spams the board or has a lot of shared creature types. So it's pretty darn strong and it was high value. So a good reprint overall. And again, at rare, it's not too bad. Archaeomancer's Map, another really good reprint was last printed as part of the list prior to that had been in a commander deck um it was like eight dollars but this is just another really good card that i don't think has been widely accessible in terms of pull rates and being able to get your hands on it so good card good reprint no complaints there nice to see it and again you know i think the artwork on all of these is incredible um even the lower ends are less desirable ones but still just wanted to again shout that out ever flowing chalice this is like a 75 cent card that's been printed a billion times so i'm out on this i mean it's a cool looking card but it's really not a card you want to be pulling out of your box stopper and it's not anything that's going to hold substantial value so it's you know it's a good card it's got uses for sure but it's also kind of a disappointment and a bit of a letdown really uh in that slot lightning greaves uh this card was last reprinted in doctor who and like every other commander product ever um it was also in commander masters but for some reason it just always goes back up to five dollars plus i think it's just because it's one of the most universally played cards across all of commander and you know in some other formats as well uh but this card is just really good the thing is that premium versions of lightning greaves have typically done well over time so i do think you'll see this box stopper version be more than a lot of its predecessors simply because it's a desired card with some cool art and it's not necessarily going to be the easiest thing to get of course so you know when cards are in demand like that but if you go back and look at you know the last time that lightning greaves got a, a box stopper or borderless um it has done pretty well for itself i think that was double masters one although i'm not 100 percent sure mimic that this is a 30 cent card it's a cool looking reprint but it's disappointing it's not a good choice at all especially not as a rare 
Uh, I'm not trying to sit here and like shit on everything. I'm just trying to be transparent and say like, if I'm opening a box and this is the one I pull, am I going to be disappointed? Or am I going to be happy? And I'm going to be disappointed if I pull this. But if it's a card you want, you could probably buy it for like not all that much money once it actually uh, comes out. Trionic Resonator, a really good card for certain combos, especially things that, you know, want to rely on triggered abilities. Um, it was about $2.50 from the March of the Machines Commander deck, and prior to that had been in some other Commander products. Uh, decent card, like, it's really good, and it started to drop a little bit as it gets more prints, but I don't think this is terrible. Uh, you know, in terms of value, it's not the highest, but it's also a really good card that just, you know, again, is kind of scarce, so pretty good inclusion here for in you know in a main set again assuming it'll also be in the collector boosters thought vessel a uh, two dollar card prior to this but thought vessel is always a card people want and it always ends up holding value it's just generically good and i think much like lightning greaves you'll see this premium version command a bit more value than some of its more standard reprints Shimil, the inner sun we talked about this card in a video covering the main set and i'm fairly certain this is i i tried to research this this was provided you know provided with the box toppers this is the only card i think in the set that's actually going to be a box topper as well um so i don't really have like a price comparison in terms of a reprint this pre-selling around 30 dollars, which is okay um really good card i i don't know what this is going to look like from a value perspective so i don't know whether or not like it's actually a good inclusion here but i mean it's it's odd that they made one new card as part of it but maybe it's just you know thematically it makes sense either way it's still a really good card and it's a you know i i don't know i wouldn't be disappointed with this but i don't know what it's going to look like from value and finally we've got worn power stone this one again a 50 cent card with a bazillion prints cool card has use without a doubt but again just not the best choice here um i do think as a whole though these box toppers are pretty solid it's just a little nice little something extra to get on top i just want you know when you're making a box topper thing and you, you want to have i understand like not one you can't just put 20 great cards in there technically um because there has to be some you know allure and, and value and they want to save reprints for later and you can get into a whole thing about that if you want to um but i just think there were maybe some better uncommons even a soul ring i mean you could have put a soul ring in here themed around the treasure stuff those always end up doing well so yeah i don't know it's it's solid though i'm looking forward to getting some of this set and opening it up without a doubt and yeah let me know what you guys think of the box toppers does it you know sway you a little bit more towards wanting to get one or not um let me know in the comments down below and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace